Hey there and welcome to Coatsense Workshop. Today I'm starting a series on roller guns. Uh, a little bit overdue I know. But anyway, about seven years ago I wrote an article in the Ultimate Spearfishing Magazine Volume 14 called Unrolling the Roller. And um, it has become a bit of a staple for guys wanting to know how to set up their roller guns. The thing is that that is seven years old. Not a lot's changed but there's a few things in here that have stood the test of time and um, other things that have changed um, but one of the biggest changes that I've, I've noticed is that seven years ago man we're all about how much power to get out of a roller gun and nowadays it's a lot different accuracy um, the way it feels the finesse um, making that gun work really well is far more important than how much power you get out of it so in this video series I want to just cover from the basics what is a roller gun through to how it works um, some of the science and then run through all the setups from 90, 110, 120, 130. I'll compare what I wrote seven years ago to what I've been explaining to guys over the last few years and, and what's working. So yeah, let's get to it. Before we get into roller guns, just a brief history. Roller guns aren't new. They've been around a 50s or 60s, somewhere around there, but they were pretty ineffective um, complicated um, and it's only in the last few years that the not only is the technology and the materials kind of enabled roller guns to be what they are um, but I think there's a lot of learning that went with it to get it to the place where it is what it is today so for those of you who are new to roller guns it's pretty simple a roller gun is a spear gun that has a roller or pulley on the muzzle end that allows the rubber to wrap around and drive the shaft from the notch at the back all the way through to the muzzle. How that compares to a conventional spear gun is quite easy if you demonstrate it. Here I have a 140 um, spear gun. I'll match up the handles so everything's the same. This rubber is actually a bit short for this 140 but you'll see that it comes to zero energy rest over here which means that it only drives the shaft from the same place that this roller gun did through to where this roller gun's muzzle stops. So this 140 has the same drive length as basically this 110. And a spear gun's energy is calculated as the amount of force over the distance that it drives the shaft. So not only, not only does this roller gun drive it's shaft the same distance as this 140. This 140 is using a 1.9 meter shaft and this roller gun is only using a 1.5 meter shaft. The significance in that is that um, the longer the shaft is the more whip um, you have in the shaft and that is where you lose most of your energy with really long shafts especially if they're made out of stainless steel. So the shorter and stiffer the shaft is, the more energy you can actually put into it without, with that gun still remaining accurate, um, put it that way. Let's talk about recoil and roller guns. One of the great advantages that a roller gun has over a conventional gun is its management of recoil. Conventional guns generate a lot of recoil for a couple of reasons. Number one, when they fire, it's quite an explosive um, force where your highest pressure is here down to zero so it's it's quite a short sudden um, burst of power which um, you need to hold the, the the gun or the platform that's why a lot of guys have big horrible wooden guns to have inertia and that recoil affects the shot affects accuracy um, it even causes you to flinch or try double hand which is um, a very bad habit one of the things I realized when I was doing the articles for the magazine was that there was no one out there that could actually explain to me um, with real answers why different setups worked better than others. So I went to um, people a lot smarter than me, worked out how to um, build a model that would um, explain or how do you say um, quantify um, the amounts of power that each gun or each rubber setup would have. And it's actually quite simple. All you need to do 
is you need to work out what the load is on the notch, the amount of kilograms on the notch, the load at rest, which will be on the muzzle or on our conventional gun, that will be um, zero. And then you work out the distance that it's driving. So it'll drive the shaft from the notch all the way to there and you use that distance. So if you have a starting point of X amount of kilos and it ends at Y amount of kilos and you have the distance, you'll be able to work out how much power is going to go into that shaft using a simple area um, calculation, which I will show you here on this graph. What I did um, in the beginning was I took uh, lengths of rubber, um, prime line rubber, um, as fresh as I could get from, from Rob Allen, and did a series of tests to work out what did it take to stretch the rubber to 200%, what did it take to stretch the rubber to 220%, 230%, all the way up to 400%. So I um, and built um, a graph that you could go at 300%, a 60 mil rubber gives you X. So after working out the band stretch, um, it's quite simple to work out what the loads will be on the standard 110 that has 14 mil bands. So let's use that gun as an example. This gun has a muzzle load of about 17 and a half kilos. So that's around about here on this mark over there. And when it's fully loaded, when it's fully loaded, it's only about 37 kilos, which is over here. So let's just make a mark there and write 37 kgs. Right. Now, the way to work this out is that your starting point is at zero up on the top of your muzzle there. That's at zero. And at 17 kilos. So let's just write 17. It's actually 17.5. At 110, which is down here, right, it's 37 kilos. So all you do is you draw a line from there to there, and then there you go. Right, the easiest way to illustrate this now is to compare it to a conventional gun. A conventional gun which is uh, like sort of the stock standard, one of my fa all time favorites was a 130 with a 20 mil band at 73 centimeters and a 7 mil shaft. That's the gun that I shot my big Marlin with, shot loads of big Spanish mackerel with, it was our go to gun. Um, so let's use that, it actually has a very similar um, overall power to this 110 that I've just shown you here and I'll explain you'll see why now that 130 when it's um, relaxed it's not loaded it's at zero it's not like this gun that's got a pretension so you start at zero then your drive length is not the full 130 the rubber is 73 centimeters so if you halve that because it's half the rubber coming down the one side that only gives you about 93 and a half centimeters of drive. So that's going to be somewhere around about here-ish, right? I know, and then because we modeled all the um, different rubber strengths, that 130, when you fully load it, you're seeing stars, your chest caving in, it's a whopping 67 kilograms. And that's like up here somewhere. I'm gonna write it in 67 kgs. I don't even know if I'd be able to load one of those guns these days. So you're going from zero to 60, 67, sorry, over that distance. So let's just draw this in with our shaft here. Yeah. 
Here we have the graph for the 130 conventional gun. Let's work out the potential energy by working out the area of, of that triangle, which is basically 93.5 centimeters multiplied by 67 kgs divided by 2, which equals 3132. And that is your potential energy expressed in a kg per centimeter. For the 110, you work out the bottom rectangle and the top triangle to get your area. It's like going back to school. So here we have it's 17.5 kgs multiplied by 110. That's for this bottom rectangle. And then to work out the top, it's 3.7 minus your 17.5. That's to give you this area here. Multiply that by 110 divided by 2. And this total comes to 2997. Okay. Not only does this graph show us how close these two setups are in terms of their potential energy, it illustrates really well um, recoil and why, why the conventional gun has more recoil than the roller gun. All the energy over here, it's this triangle here, is in a very short explosive burst, where on the roller gun, all that energy is spread out over the full length of the gun. And that is one of the main reasons why roller guns have way less recoil than conventional guns. And the flatter this line is, the less recoil your gun will have. So using this graph and area calculation to work out potential energy, over the next few videos I'm going to be showing you why I choose to use certain setups. Why certain setups work better than others. We'll do them together, I'll thrash them out on the board and uh, Hopefully this will help you make better decisions with your spear guns. I hope these concepts and explanations haven't been too complicated. I know that over the course of these um, next videos in the series, they will become a lot clearer and easier to understand. In the next video, I'm going to be sharing with you why I use a full pretension over a standard pretension with the roller guns. So don't miss out on the next video. Make sure you've subscribed. Check the links in the description below for the magazine articles and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.